Hi friends, it's Marceline. I have my fingers crossed today because the internet in my studio has been going in and out all day. So fingers crossed that we will get through our Stress Talk Live without any interruptions. However, if we do have interruptions, I will make sure that I record a, a complete session for you because it's jam packed today. I don't want you to miss anything. So we're going to get right into it in the event our internet decides to cut off. So let's get to it in just a moment. Hi friends, I'm back and so far so good. And as I said just a few seconds ago that the internet in my studio has been going in and out. So if it goes out, I will make sure that I record everything again and post it to Facebook or to and or to and to YouTube. So because this is a jam packed session, what am I talking about today? Well, first of all, I want to tell you who I'm talking to. I'm talking to my sisters out there today. Um, you know, we have this thing where we do a lot of things for a lot of people and we don't always take care of ourselves and our health. So this is for my sisters today. Now, I know there are a lot of women out there who don't look like me, who experience what um, is known as super the superwoman syndrome, but I, I am talking to my sisters today because we do things that we put other things in front of ourselves and we put other people in front of ourselves. So the rest of you all can listen and I, I want you to listen, but I want my sisters out there to really hear what I'm talking about today, especially today. So yes, we are talking about the superwoman syndrome. And I'm going to talk about what that is and how that looks. I'm also going to share some things that we can do to kind of help ourselves to get out of it because it does mess with our health, right? I want you also to know that I've written a blog post for this week. You'll find that blog post on happyhalfhour.club as well as on for Real Social Workers Online Magazine. And it is about the superwoman syndrome. And I actually looked at um, some work of Cheryl L. Woods' Giscombe who is a, who has a doctorate. She's an RN and she is currently the Melissa and Harry Levine Family Professor of Quality of Life, Health, Promotion and Wellness at the University of North Carolina School of Nursing. She has done a lot of research on the effects of stress in the African-American community. So you want to, if you have a chance or if you're even interested, look up her work, look at her research. You can actually look up her journal articles and read them because it has a lot of, a lot of rich information that directly relates to our community, our health and the impact that stress has on us. And um, we really, you know, it, it has a lot of implications for our health. For example, and I've talked about this before, stress, stress affects our, how can I say, it? stress affects our health. And when we have chronic stress, it contributes to the development of cardiovascular disease, 
high blood pressure. It um, affects diabetes. It also has implications and affects uh, cancer. If you have any type of chronic or ongoing condition, it has a negative effect on that condition. Also, stress affects our mental health. Many women have anxiety and depression, and we just keep going. We don't seek treatment. We don't seek help because why? We are super women and we feel that we can do it all. The reality is we can't do it all. We really can't. So let's get into, and of course I have a little presentation for you because you know we remember things, we hear things, and if we can see things, we remember it better. We learn it better. If we can hear, if we can see, if we can touch, we really learn. But you can't touch this yet. You can't touch it. You can't, you can't, you can't touch it. But I'm going to have a little, a little presentation so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So let's get, let's get to it. Let's see if I can get into it. And boom, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. So we're talking about wearing the cape. Yes, wearing the cape because, of course, superheroes have capes. And black women, well, we are superheroes, right? We're, we're just like social workers, <laughs> of which, remember, I am a social worker, so and I have a cape on every day. But sometimes I get tired. I get tired of my cape. And although... There are times when I take my cape off, other people still see me with the cape and they expect me to do things. And that's how we are. Sisters out there, we have that cape on every day, all day. And we're out there doing that thing, taking care of everybody else, taking care of everyone else's everything, and we put ourselves on hold. Well, today I want to share with you what that really looks like. What does the superwoman syndrome look like for Black women? And this is based on Dr. Woods Jiscombe's work. She actually did a study looking at the superwoman syndrome and the what that meant to Black women. She actually held a series of focus groups to gather information in this study, and they looked at a number of things. Basically, but in general, it was about the superwoman syndrome. Out of that study, she determined five different things that we as Black women do that encapsulates the superwoman syndrome for us. And I'm going to go over those five characteristics today. You can also read more in the blog post that will hit on Tuesday and Thursday of this week. So let's talk about the first characteristic. The first characteristic that we display as Black women is that we cannot show weakness. Black women feel that we have to present strength even when we don't feel like it. We have to be strong. And let's admit it, that's what mama, grandma, auntie, the, the woman next door, and and scores of other Black women that we saw, that's what they did. Even when we saw them struggle, we were emboldened by their, their unwavering strength. It was, it's a badge of honor to be strong. You know, we saw them, they, they stood tall like cypress trees and we wanted to be like them. The thing about being strong 
in the face of challenges and presenting a strong face in the face of challenges is that it tires us out. When we're having to present a present strength, we're having to be strong, we hold a lot of things in and it uses a lot of energy. Remember, I talked about how stress is really, it uses energy. And unless we're able to replenish that energy, we reach burnout because there's no fuel for us to keep going. And so when we are faced with challenges, which many of us are in our daily lives, in our professional lives, in our home life, we and we have to be strong for everyone else around us, it uses energy. It uses a lot of energy. So we want to be aware of the characteristic that has been um, emblazoned in our brains that we have to be strong. I hear this a lot too from women who are have lost a loved one and they feel as if they have to be uh, strong for their for their family, right? They feel as if they um, they feel as if, oh my goodness, <laughs> I just realized that I um I may not have put all of our all of my um I think I put them in the wrong order on this slide. So, I'm sorry about that. Um but we feel as if we cannot show, we can't cry in front of other people. We can't show that we are um having difficulty with the loss because we have to be strong. And if you hear people talk about others who have lost someone, they say, oh, she's doing fine. She's being strong. Well, again, not able to show when we are feeling weak, not able to, not being able to show when we are um, having difficulty is it wears us out, it causes overwhelming stress, and we um, and it 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 draws us closer to burnout. So let's see what the second characteristic it is, which may not be the one that is on our slide. So let's let's jump to that <laughs> that one. Um, well, let's do this. Let's go back. Let's let's talk about not being able to fail, because that is one of the characteristics. Um, <laughs> that's see, this is the this is one of the joys of having uh, doing something live. When all else, when it fails, you can admit it and you can go on, right? So, but we're talking about not being able to fail right now. I did talk about not showing weakness and. That should show up on the slide at some point. But let's talk about not being able to fail. So Black women have been taught that we have to work twice as hard to get um, to the same place that others are get, right? And despite the social, economic, and political limitations that we face, and yes, those are very real, we do have a drive to be successful. However, to achieve our perception of success, we often sacrifice our health and our well-being. Focus group participants said that they consistently work long hours and they fail to get enough sleep. We also know that success, our perception of success, also means that we have to have it all. We have to make sure that we pro pro make progress in our professions, meaning that we take on more and more responsibilities, that we are promoted within our, within our work, within our jobs. 
within our career. We also have to make sure that we keep our husbands happy, right? Because we have to make sure that we have, we present a happy marriage. We have to raise children who um, are also successful because if they are not successful or if they have difficulties, then that makes us look like failures. We also have to advise our emerging children, our emerging adult children, to make sure that they are successful, that they are um, representing us in a way that prevents us from looking like we failed. In addition to all of that, we have to make sure our house is clean, right? We have to have a clean house. We have to make sure our yard is kept. And for those of us who are blessed to have older parents, we also have to provide support for them. So with all of these pieces, there is an expectation that we do all of this and we do all of it well. We can't fail. We cannot fail. And that puts us under a, a pressure that just compounds. We're under pressure at work. We're under pressure uh, at home. We're under pressure in our community to make sure everything is perfect. Everything is just right. And again, when we're having to work twice as hard anyway, when we have obstacles socially, economically, and yes, politically, it makes it very difficult. We expend a lot of energy trying to make sure that we are successful. In addition to that, we can't let anyone else fail. The focus groups, the participants in the focus groups shared that it was very difficult to say no. They had to always help other people. And we are nurturers, let's face it. Women are nurturers and black women are nurturers. You see it in, in all types of shows, right? <laughs> We're the ones who come to the rescue of the main character. We're the ones in shows who, who are always encouraging the main characters to do something or to go for their dream, right? Well, a lot of that happens in real life too. We're the ones who tend to, we feel obligated to meet the needs of others. We feel responsible for the other people's comfort and their happiness. At work, do you find yourself encouraging your coworkers? Do you find yourself being in the grocery line, speaking calming, peaceful words to a stranger you don't know? <laughs> History requires us to take on the role of the superwoman when we, as, as nurturer, it does. Again, Black women are the nurturers. We're the ones who raise other people's children for them when we're not available to raise our own. We're the ones who take care of other people. My grandmother was a domestic. She worked in people's homes. She cooked, she cleaned, she washed clothes, she ironed their clothes. That was her, that was her job. That was her occupation. She was a nurturer. She got to know other people's children. She left her own children to do that. 
not by choice, but by necessity. As Black women, we sometimes believe that we can address the obstacles, inadequate resources, and our life's experiences by taking on this superwoman role of being the nurturer. We can make things better for our children. We can make things better and easier for our community. We can encourage our partners as a superwoman. But again, it can be very draining and it can use a lot of energy when we are always available for everybody's everything. Here it is. Weakness is never an option. And I've discussed that. We have to be strong in the face of obstacles, in the face of challenges. We have to be strong in as we deal with loss. Never emotional. Now, we tend to hide our emotions, right? And often to our detriment. In the uh, focus group, some of the women actually said that they didn't know how to express their emotions. Well, for Black women, expressing emotions can be misinterpreted as weakness, it can also be interpreted, misinterpreted as threatening to the majority culture. I mean, just think about it. In the workplace, Black women have been labeled aggressive. We've been called hard to work with. Or we have been told that we have attitudes. All because we expressed our emotions all because we verbalized how we felt. So we've learned that we can't do that because if we do it, if we express our emotions, if we verbalize how we feel, it can hurt us. But it is not only in the workplace that this comes into play. It also comes into play in our own communities. If we express how we feel, we're put down. Sometimes we're disparaged. And then people avoid us because they don't want to hear it. Our friends and our families may get tired of hearing our emotional concerns. They may even label us as crazy or you know how, you know how they are. They're, they just get all, you know, you know how that is. Expressing emotions in the Black community is uncomfortable. It makes us appear weak. When we express our needs, we can't be available to other people. And it may suggest that we're failures. So we learn not to express our feelings. We learn to hide them. We learn to bottle them up, put a cap on them until something happens and causes the cap to fly off and everything to bubble out. What about vulnerability? Nope, we can't be vulnerable either. And this is also a characteristic of the superwoman syndrome, particularly in the black community and with black women. Vulnerability opens us up to being hurt. And, and we've seen our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunts, and other women 
in our community hurt by people that they trusted. They made themselves vulnerable and they were hurt. So one of the ways that we try to prevent that is by controlling the situations around us, controlling the situations that involve us. Again, this drains us. It drains our strength. It drains our energy and it causes overwhelming strength, overwhelming stress. But this is what has been verbalized to us and modeled before us. Black women teach their daughters that they can't depend on anyone. The only one that they can depend on is themselves. We are taught that over and over and we see it over and over. And for this reason, we make sure that we don't allow our vulnerability to show. So this is a pretty heavy subject. And again, I'm talking to my sisters out there because we need to take better care of ourselves and we need to get over having to be everybody's everything. So how can we do that? What can we do? First of all, we need to take breaks. Yes, we need to take breaks and we need to take as many breaks as possible. So what do I mean by taking a break? One of the reasons that I started this, started Stress Talk Live, created the Stress Talk private Facebook group, and the reason that I created From Burnout to Balance, the it's a course, but it's also a support for working women who feel overwhelmed by stress is because we don't know how to take breaks. And one of the things that I help you to learn is how to do that. Some of us take breaks by taking a mental health day, right? We just take a whole day off and we relax or we watch TV all day or we just take time to ourselves for a whole day. We have to learn to take breaks throughout the day. One example that I use in the From Burnout to Balance Guided Mastery course is take a real lunch. Stop eating lunch at your desk. When you take a lunch and you take lunch with a coworker, don't talk about work. Leave the building. Go somewhere where it's quiet. Allow yourself to attend to your meal and enjoy the flavors of your food. Eat slowly. That's taking a real break. But we have to learn how to take breaks. And again, in the From Burnout to Balance Guided Mastery course, that's one of the things that I talk about. Get some things off your plate. Learn how to delegate. We have, our plates are full and it's overflowing. But think about a plate that's overflowing. Have you ever gone to a picnic and there was lots of things that you like to eat and there was always somebody who piled food on their plate. They got some of everything and they piled the plate, piled it up and the plate started bowing and things started falling off the plate. Well, that's what happens emotionally, mentally, when we are trying to do everything for everybody. Our plate is overloaded and things fall off. We have to learn to delegate and we have to learn to get things off our plate. We also have to learn that we are not responsible for everything. 
The other thing that we need to do is to remember that we don't have to be perfect. Come on now. Perfection is a myth. No one on this earth is perfect. We may think it they are, and we may think that their lives are perfect, but it's not. It's a fallacy. Perfection is a fallacy. I'm not perfect, and you all see all of my mistakes when I'm doing these lives, right? No one is perfect. So we have to make sure and we have to remember that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to, to not get everything exactly right. Sisters, we have to ask for and accept help. We have to learn that that is okay. There was a time in my life when my family was going through, we were just going through very difficult times. My husband was having health issues. We were fi having financial issues. And I was trying to be a superwoman. It was during that time that I learned that it was okay to accept help. People were coming to me offering, <coughs> excuse me, offering me, offering assistance. And I had to learn that it was okay to accept that, that assistance. I also learned that it was okay to ask. That was a very difficult time. I had learned that you don't ask for help. How many of you out there are like, have learned that you don't ask for help? You don't want to make yourself vulnerable. You don't want to people to see your vulnerabilities. But we have to ask for it and we have to accept it because that is how we take care of ourselves. That is how we maintain good health, both mental and physically, mentally and physically. And relax. Yes. Another thing that we need to do is learn how to relax. Now, for some people, relaxation means sitting quietly, reading a book. For other people, relaxation means getting out and dancing, going where there are a lot of people and there's a lot of activity. All of that is okay. The main thing is to learn how to relax and to experience relaxation fully. In, our, in the guided mastery course that I've developed, I teach how to engage in, re, in, engage in activities that re-energize and refill your energy tanks. And basically, that's what relaxation is. And we have to learn how to do that throughout the day. Embrace your support system. Some of you may say you don't have a support system. Some of you may wonder how you create a support system. Having a support system is important, especially for my sisters who try to be super women. One of the things that I've learned is your support system can be as small or as large as you feel comfortable. My personal support system is very small. I have several people that, a small group of people, core group of people that I know that I can depend on. And I know that I can depend on them because we have been together through thick and thin. I have a couple of friends. I have family members who I know that if I call, they're going to be there for me. Likewise, if they call me, I'm going to be there for them. 
So you want your support system. Again, your support system can be as large or as small as you feel comfortable. It is important, however, to make sure that you have a support system that you can trust. Finally, you want to become comfortable saying no. No is a big word. It's only two letters, but it is a big word. And saying no can be very difficult. <laughs> Sometimes we get stressed out because we've said no. <laughs> what I've learned personally and through my work, working with women who uh, have overwhelming stress, what I've learned is that sometimes it's less stressful to say no than it is to take on whatever responsibility or activity that someone wants you to do, right? It may still be stressful, but it's not as stressful as having to take on that other responsibility. So we want to practice saying no. And there are certainly different ways to say no. You don't have to just say no. You can say, you know what? I need to check my calendar and see if I'm available. You know what? I'm not able to do it, but let me let me share uh, somewhat the names and numbers of someone who can do that for you. You know what? I have another engagement. Wow, that sounds like a really fun thing to do, and I would love to help you, but I'm not available on that day. You know, I don't think I have exactly the skills that you need. However, I do know someone else who does. Let me get their name. Let me talk to them and see if they're available. There are a million, a million and one ways to say no without sounding harsh and without being blunt. However, Sometimes you do need to be blunt. No, I can't. No, I don't want to. No. Being comfortable with saying no. That's a lot, isn't it? I know it is a lot. It is a lot. And I want you to... Um, I want you to know that, here we go. I want you to know that that's, it's a lot and it feels like it's a lot because when you're trying to be a super woman, it is overwhelming and it is hard. And once we can do what we've shared, then it makes it easier and we feel better. Oh, let's take a deep breath. <sighs> I know this is kind of heavy. This is a heavy subject. But again, for all of my sisters out there who try are trying to be a superwoman, you really don't have to. I want you to make sure that you read the blog post that's going to drop on Tuesday in happyhalfhour.club. Also, it's going to be posted on Thursday on Real Social Workers Online Magazine. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to be sharing information about the Guided Mastery class. This class is going to be done in a couple of ways. You can do it in a self-study or you can do it working with me in a small group. I think that'll be fun. I think we'll learn a lot from each other. And we're going to go from burnout to balance. We're going to learn how we can take care of our family, our friends, and ourselves without feeling like being super women. I'm Marcy Bailey. I'm glad you joined me again for another Stress Talk 
live. I'll see you next week. And in the meantime, take good care.